Hello and welcome to another contest result show. My name is Cyril Lachelle, and on Friday I asked this question. Shoot Shimi is a fast-paced shooter where the levels only last a few seconds and the rules always change. What is a game franchise you wish would speed up and be more random? Oh, you did not disappoint. And today I'm going to go over my favorite contest entries. In this episode, I'll be reading what you said and reacting to it. The winners will take home copies of Shoot Shimi on Steam, and the runners-up will hear me butcher their name and respond to their ideas. Sound like a plan? Alright, let's start with Sly Dante, who said, Tough call. This might be a more recent game, but I just finished Until Dawn recently, and while I loved the game and its butterfly setup and gameplay premise, I feel like it could be expanded upon even further and made even crazier. Remember that scene from Cabin in the Woods where the kids are initially looking for the old trinkets in the basement and unknowingly choose what kind of horror movie monster they summon? Imagine an entire game of that. A bunch of teenagers in the mountains again, but now there are even more horror setups and stories going on at once. And every sudden choice you make could instantly thrust you into a different threat with a blink of an eye. The current Until Dawn has a lot of replay value, but a sequel with a scenario with a full-on cabin-style purge going on with quicker playthroughs and even more butterfly effect choices whose outcome could even change with each game to ensure that you keep coming back in order to try each new twisted creation. Just a thought. This is a great idea, and I'd, I'd like to see this extended to Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and the rest of David Cage's work. Up next is Duke Jaywalker. How about chess? Not exactly a franchise, but what if sometimes random squares were booby-trapped or contained power-ups? Imagine moving a pawn to a magic square that grants temporary invincibility, or maybe a square is designated as a wormhole that teleports pieces randomly. Perhaps each side has two or three randomly drawn magic spell cards that they can break out when they feel the need. For example, the one-time ability to freeze an enemy piece for a turn or a slow spell that gives you two moves in a row, or transforming a bishop into a knight, your own, or your enemies. It would speed up the game and remove some of the advantages that some players have from memorizing hundreds of opening sequences. Two words, battle chess. Up next we have Pure Mix, who says, The Witcher Franchise. This RPG series is pretty basic now, just slaying dragons that appear in fantasies and having an inventory full of weird potions and weapons. Speed it up! Yes, please, the game's duration is very long, and add random elements to it like guns and bazookas. The time from attacking an enemy boss may drop from infinite seconds to just one second. Easy. As somebody who's intimidated by the size and scope of The Witcher 3, having a shorter, more random Witcher wear might be just my thing. Up next, we have Mando Rodriguez, who says, We're just thinking about isometric platformers the other day, so I'd say the Solstice Equinox series. You go from room to room and kill enemies, solving simple puzzles, and trying to reach stuff. The same stuff every room. Would be neat if the rooms and enemies changed so that every time you went into a room you'd had something different to escape. Like maybe a bomb timer goes off and you need to disarm it by getting around the room and flipping switches. Room floods and you have to drain it. Random enemies pop in, etc. You'd make all the backtracking you had to do fun. Agreed. I think the series just needs a comeback. The problem is, now that they've used both Solstice and Equinox, what would they even call a third installment? Sanayoshi Sawada, which I'm sure I'm butchering, says Chess Master. I know, I know, it sounds weird. But hey, wouldn't it be nice if you could turn it into a fast-paced game? And also, if it's random rules, then there are no rules anymore. You can kill anyone whenever you want. Oh, wait, I think it just turned into an RPG game. Oh, looks like you were on the same page as Duke Jaywalker. I hate to repeat myself, but two words. Archon. Wait, that's not right. Darker Eye New Moon says, Dark Souls. If you really think about it, all the enemies in the game are always in the same place. I would like a mode where all the enemies were random in beginner areas. I'd also like the randomization of chests, stats being leveled up, and weapon strength changing. You can tell I like the challenge. I hope that eventually Dark Souls becomes so popular that it's spun off into a kart game and Mario Party clone. I'm not joking. I see a lot of potential in Dark Souls racing. And now, our two winners. Let's start with the Pink Bunny of Death. Silent Hill. 
think the secret endings, but sprinkled randomly throughout the pace of the game like Vanquish. Yeah, it might ruin the tone of the game, but it would be high entertainment to see the masterfully created atmosphere and abruptly juxtaposed by the absurd and outlandish. For example, you're in a hospital, and you're approached by a nurse, and you pull out a gun ready to shoot. She then, out of nowhere, throws a maraca hitting square in the forehead. Mariachi music swells in the background as the nurse changes into a traditional Mexican dress. Now you must fight her burrito minions while she occasionally throws exploding maracas. And once the fight ends, it would never be referenced. Not even a single explanation, only to repeat another episode of ridiculousness in a couple of hours. It'd get a laugh out of me. When I close my eyes and concentrate, this is what Silent Hills would have been. And finally, we have Joseph Coco, who says, The Shenmue series. I feel like these games suffered from only letting me move boxes around in a factory. Why not move boxes around in a field? Then jump to moving fish at a restaurant. Then jump to moving golf clubs for a dad so maybe they would care about him as a player. I take it you didn't back the Kickstarter project. While I agree with the biting criticism, Shenmue is the most expensive version of Boxel ever created. Would that joke have worked better if I said shove it instead? Or maybe a game that wasn't 25 years old? Thank you everybody for entering the contest and congratulations to our two winners. We'll be back in a few hours with a brand new contest, so don't you dare unsubscribe from this channel. Also, to the two winners, do me a favor and shoot me a YouTube message or let me know what the best way is to get a hold of you. Thanks! We'll be back on Monday to take on Armello, one of the best video board games I've ever played. We also have a bunch of previews going up, including 12 is better than 6, Overfall, and 80 Days. Oh, and don't forget to check out our newest episode of Online Pass, the weekly video game news quiz. We'll be back in a few hours with my Armello review, so do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 